All right guys, today we're gonna to be doing a quick little update. I wanna make sure that you guys are kind of along for every step of this process with this LS Swap Miata. And there's some things that aren't really worth making a dedicated video on, so I just kind of do a bunch of them and then I'll update you guys. New parts that come in, things that have changed, etc. So I think we're gonna to try to do it this way. Let me know if you like this or not. Um, but quick little update. I'm like blinded from that white. So I picked up this LS2 intake manifold from my buddy Eric. Uh, it's got this 90 mil throttle body on it. It's like a nice Holley 90 mil. Definitely overkill for this motor and my power goals, but it was cheaper than buying an LS1 intake with a throttle body. I traded him a camera that I was gonna sell, that I would have sold him for 300 bucks. I was trying to get like 350, 375 out of it, um, but he's a homie, so I would have sold it to him for 300 bucks. I traded him that for the intake. So essentially I have 300 bucks into this intake. And while I was there, he has a bunch of LS stuff. So we picked up a couple more things. One, we have coil packs, which these are the uh, heat sink style, unnecessary for my application, but it was 50 bucks for all of them with the brackets and the connectors. Also, I have G8 manifolds down there. I never explained that before, but they're a nice uh, style manifold. They come out kind of like in the perfect spot of the Miata. They, they dump right by the firewall, right in between like the whole frame rail-ish nonsense that's in the engine bay. So Martin suggests them because they're just the easiest thing to use. It's really easy to make an exhaust from there. I got those for 75 bucks on eBay. Um, so I'm gonna take them, here, let me show you. Coil packs. So I'm gonna take them and take these heat shields off, grind down the like nubs and stuff for the heat shields and have them ceramic coated. Uh, one, for heat, just trying to keep some heat out of the engine bay, but two, they just look sweet. Uh, ceramic coated, I'll insert a picture of them, ceramic coated. They look really good. So that is why we are doing that. Um, covered the coil packs. Also, before I show you guys the next part, I wanna show you something funny that I noticed. So we have a ton of people, <laughs> it seems like registered to this house with their Harbor Freight address. So like for example, my old roommate Taylor, my old roommate Hunter, me and Fed. So when we get these catalogs in the mail, they're all a little bit different. So some have coupons, some don't. This is the second time this has happened. I get the ones and I'm like, well, I shop at Harbor Freight all the time. I, mine are definitely the ones with the most coupons because I'm a valued customer that buys a bunch of stuff there. No. My old roommate Hunter, who never shops there, gets the most valuable coupons. 20% off whatever. Me and Fed, who shop there quite often, no coupons. No coupons. Last month, there was a fourth one for my other roommate, Taylor, who also doesn't shop there often, and Hunter had more coupons than him, um, but he still had way more than us. We both had no coupons, and he had coupons. So I wonder if they do it in a way where they're like, these people shop all the time, we don't need to entice them with coupons, but let's try to get these people back with coupons. If so, it's pretty shady, Harbor Freight. Pretty shady on you. I think it's funny, though. Just a little observation I thought you guys might find interesting. Oh God, I almost dropped them. So the next thing we picked up was something I wasn't gonna do, but these are like 125 bucks if you buy them new. Eric sold them to me for 50 bucks. It's the uh, Trunion upgrade DIY version. Basically it upgrades the bearings and everything um, in the rocker arms because supposedly in high RPM, the needle bearings in the rocker arms will like fly apart and go in your motor and can blow it up. I'm sure Matt from Slapping Mechanics would tell me this is a waste of money, and I thought it was probably a waste of money, but it was 50 bucks, and it's cheap insurance, and if you guys wanna do it yourself, I'll be able to do a video, show you guys how to do it. So I figured it was worthwhile. So we have a slight problem with this intake. Let me take this out. Okay, so there we go. So that's pretty much all end up. So to buy like a nice aftermarket kit for this is only 60 bucks or so. So we might go that route, but basically when this is actually bolted on, it hits the intake manifold. So I'm gonna cut this, clock it like 45 degrees this way, and then uh, re-weld it on. And then that way we can run a hose like right under here to the steam port on the rad. So we're gonna do that. Uh, before we do that, I wanna update you guys on a few more parts that have come in. Um, so we've got something for the transmission. We're gonna make a video on that. It's how to do like a super cheap trans for an LS that's actually really stout. A lot of you guys probably already know what that is, but we're gonna go over it how to order the trans, find it, whatever. Um, maybe how to do it in the same video. Uh, anyway, not using a T56 though. So there's that. Number two, LSX Innovations. Sent me over a bunch of brackets for the accessory drive. I was trying to find them online and 
if you do find them, they're really expensive for F-body stuff because everyone knows that's what everyone uses and they make really cheap brackets that are nice like billet brackets and literally it's easier and costs about the same as buying stock brackets unless you're a super bargain shopper and spend hours on the internet haggling with dudes on forums. Uh, so I just went that route because it's easier, it's simpler, it's going to get us up and running faster. Um, so I'll show you guys that maybe in this video, probably in a later video. But we'll do, we'll put the accessories on, I'll show you guys then. But I've got all the accessories in, the only thing I need to get is an alternator, but I already ordered the water pump waiting on that. But I got the power steering pump, power steering pump pulley. They also are sending me over uh, coil pack relocation brackets, which will be cool. It'll keep the engine bay simple and make it easy to work on stuff like pulling headers in and out and whatever because I can mount them like on the firewall. Um, so that's cool. So we're really chucking along with this thing. Uh, and it's really thanks to you guys for all the support and watching the videos and stuff. The fact that you guys have been watching the videos and it's been getting me a good amount of views per month has really helped me with this project. Um, definitely couldn't do it without you guys and the Patreon supporters. So I just wanted to say thank you because we're actually going to be able to get this done quick. Like we're able to buy parts and not have to wait every paycheck to buy parts. So that is sick. That is awesome. Thank you guys for that. Okay, we're gonna weld that thing now. So I made this, it was just a practice piece to learn how to weld something, you know, around because you have to kind of start and stop a bunch um, and like change torch angle as you go through to keep the angle correct. So I was just going to throw this out, but then I realized it works great as a torch holder. Like literally the torch just sits perfect in there and then I use this one back here to keep the hose from so it doesn't touch against whatever I'm welding over here. Because as you can see where that tape is, I had to JV weld the hose because it sat against something really hot and burned a little pinhole in it. But it's all good now. So we're gonna clog this. Figure out how we want to clock it at least. That'll give us enough room to come off and go under this and over to the steam port. on there so we can get a tack on it. Hopefully it works. Actually we're going to use a different gas lens and it won't stick out for this. Fupa number 12 Pyrex cup with a really long stick out. That'll help me get down in there. I'm just kind of a nerd and I feel cool using a plexiglass cup. That's really all there is to it. And the longer stick out is going to be super helpful. Ah. We got a tack on it. That's what's important.
might be time to give up on this. All right, new plan, I found this fitting. It threads into the steam port on my radiator so I can run just a dash 3 a.m. braided line from here to the rad. So we're gonna cut this guy um, with enough room to get some weld in there and then weld it on. It's a pretty atrocious weld, but I think it'll hold. I'm gonna try to like, just cap it, blow on it, see if it has any obvious massive leaks. This isn't, probably won't be a permanent solution. I don't know. I just wanted to try this out. So we'll see what happens with it. <laughs> All right, it is on there to actually tighten it down. I need to get an Allen bolt that's long enough to fit there because the head of that bolt, as you can see, is too big to go over the weld and the fitting itself. I don't even know if I'm gonna run that setup. It was just a fun little project attempt. Also tomorrow we're gonna to go pick up doors from Ben. Doors, fenders, bumper, door panels. Um, which is really all that car needs to look nice again. I mean, it's got a couple of dents in the back end area, but I should be able to bondo those up um, when I make it pretty again, making me out of pretty again. But since we're meeting him at the drift event tomorrow in Lakeland, cause it's like an hour and a half closer than going to meet him at his place, I figured, we're gonna drive the truck down there. We might as well hook the trailer up and take the Miata down there, swap the door there, <laughs> and then do some tandeming tomorrow. So we're gonna do that tomorrow. I just wanted to give you guys like a little update on everything that's going on with this swap. Since I failed so miserably at the first TIG weld, let me show you my also pretty terrible tack weld. This was really loose, this plate. So I just put a tack on each side of it. Now it's solid. Okay, so yeah, that's it. I'm gonna clean up and load my car up, do all that good stuff. All right, that's pretty much it for the update today. I just wanted to get you guys up to speed on everything that's going on and where we're at. Uh, next step should be cam, valve springs, tuning upgrade. Once we get that done, we can like start putting everything together, put the pan on, put the accessories on. I've been advised not to use a high flow oil pump, so we're gonna keep the stock pump. Um, but again, once we get the cam stuff done, we can really like, Start getting this thing ready to go in the engine. In the engine. We're gonna get the engine ready to go in the engine. Uh, ready to go in the car. Uh, and then we can, once we're ready to put it in the car, we can start tearing down the car. So, very exciting. I'm really stoked that progress is going along decently quickly. We're moving, we're progressing at a steady rate. And that's all I can ask for. So, thank you guys for watching. Thanks for subscribing. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.